It is 2024 and if you're in your 20s like me, we are going to thrive this year. Today I'm going to tell you everything I've learned in my 20s so far, everything you need to hear slash do in your 20s in order to live them to your fullest. We're told that our 20s are supposed to be so great. We're supposed to have the most fun, the most freedom, the most adventure, the most laughs, the most memories. And that is true, but it's also a super confusing time in a lot of our lives. It's a time where we're figuring out who we are, what our passions are, what paths we want to take, how we're going to live based the rest of our lives and it can be really confusing. You have people finishing university, you have people getting married, you have people having kids, you have people who don't know what the hell they're doing, most of us. There are so many people doing so many different things. So that's right, today I'm going to tell you everything I've learned, everything I would change, everything I would do if I were to restart my 20s today. I think comparison is a huge thing in your 20s and especially living in the world of social media. We are constantly seeing people post their accomplishments, post on social media, post about traveling the world, post about basically everything they're doing in life. At this stage in our lives, everybody's at different places. So it's really easy to compare and say, why haven't I done this yet? Or why aren't I in the place that I want to be? And I think in our 20s, we need to be disciplined and motivated and have a clear vision, but we also can't be too hard on ourselves because everybody's confused. It is everybody's first time here. And I feel like that comparison can really hold you back sometimes from going for the goals you want and actually accomplishing them. We have to realize that social media isn't real life and even those people who are accomplishing the greatest things and that you look up to have their bad days. They're just as confused as you are probably and you just don't know the whole story. So where they might be thriving in one part of their life, they might not be thriving in other parts that you're thriving in. So we need to throw that comparison out of the window and be a little nicer to yourself. I think you owe yourself a little bit of an apology because name another person who's as hard on yourself as you. You probably can't name one. If you think about it, by the time you're 25, it's actually just your first year of being a real adult. You probably just graduated college. You're probably just starting to become independent and be who you are. You're just figuring it out. You're literally in your first year of figuring out who you are as an independent person. So you need to give yourself some grace in order to figure that out. Before this, you have been in structured programs such as university, high school, middle school, elementary school, you've been at your parents' house probably, you've always been told what to do by other people and you've always been affected by your environment. So this is the first time in your life that you're actually able to figure out who you are as an individual and that can take time. It can take time and that's where we need to be a little bit easier on ourselves and not give these harsh timelines because really what are we trying to run towards and achieve? No one has given you a timeline. It's just society that places those expectations but they're all made up expectations. So when we're spiraling and thinking about how we're so behind, we really, really need to remember that. We aren't behind because what timeline are we really following? It's all made up. And life starts for a lot of people at 25, at 30. So you're not behind. So get that out of your head. If you start making your life count today, you're earlier than most. And that goes along with being present. Enjoy the moment you're never gonna be in your 20s again. This is the last time you're gonna be this young. This is the last time you're gonna look like this not have any wrinkles on your face, not have your body holding you back from being old. This is the time that you have to take advantage of all the blessings you have and think about it in more of a lens of gratitude rather than lack, like rather than thinking, oh, I'm not this, oh, I haven't achieved this, oh, I'm not where I wanna be yet. Think about all the things you are and use your unfair advantages to get ahead. Most of us are blessed enough to have the unfair advantage of having a healthy 20 year old body, 20 to 25, 20 to 30 year old body. And that is a blessing in itself. If not that, then you have a capable young brain that's free of limitations of the older generation. So use that to your advantage. Use that as the inspiration to push forward instead of comparison. Think about just how much you've grown even since last year and just think about how much more potential you have every single year you move forward the potential is endless so don't forget that i think this is the time to do all the crazy stuff chase all the dreams do all the wild stuff that you have ever imagined ever questioned move out move to a new country I say the earlier in your 20s you start doing this, the better and the easier it is because I have a theory. Every year you get older in your 20s, you get more and more comfortable staying the same and it's harder to make those decisions. But when you're in your early 20s, you don't have that attachment. You don't have that sense of extra responsibility yet that you get later in your 20s. So if you're in your young 20s, 
go for it. Go travel, move out, have those experiences before you get too attached to feeling comfortable because this is the age group that we're supposed to feel uncomfortable 24 seven. As I said, diamonds are made under pressure, not overnight. So put that pressure on yourself and enjoy the process. Fully enjoy the process. Be present in all of it because the journey is half the fun. And I know it sounds so cliche, but it really is. What's the point of all of it if you didn't enjoy those minutes? We don't know how long we're gonna live, so you might as well enjoy every day and every up and down. Dance more, laugh more, use your body more, exercise, be active, laugh, make new friends, explore new cities, do all of the things, no excuses. Once you hit your 30s or your 40s, you're gonna be probably more settled down, want to have kids, want to have a family, want to have a house, want to be more stable. So don't even waste a second of your 20s worrying about all that stuff that is going to be inevitable in the next 10 years. So forget about all those expectations and just explore yourself and what your passions are in this world. And that's your only responsibility for your 20s. A conventional life is always waiting for you on the other side whenever you're ready for it. So live as unconventionally as you can at this age. I feel like later in your 20s, there's almost like a pressure to become more serious and not have as much fun, which is weird. I'm just here to tell you, you should still be having fun. You are still young as hell. Ask a 60 year old, ask a 50 year old. They're gonna say you're a baby. So act like one while you can. I'm not saying be irresponsible. Obviously have your goals and work towards them, but have fun while you do it. Go on that trip you're never gonna regret spending that money. Those memories are worth a million dollars. You will spend that money and at first maybe it will sting, but you'll look back and you won't even think about the dollar amount you spent because the memories are priceless, those experiences are priceless, and once again, you need to use the body you're given in your 20s. Maybe you won't be able to be that active or have as much energy to do all the things that you can do in your 20s traveling, so I'd say use that time now. I mean, some people like to wait till retirement to do it, but I think it's 10 times is more fun to do it when you're young so go for it do that trip you're not gonna regret it it's probably gonna be the best decision you ever made okay so it's all fun and games we're daydreaming about all the things you should do we're not really talking about all the things that go wrong in your 20s and i'm ready to talk about that so sometimes things don't go your way you're wishing upon a star for something to happen you have big goals you have big dreams say you know what you want to do and you want those ambitions to come true sometimes there's roadblocks sometimes there's things that get in your way things don't go your way every single time and that's okay because when you're asking the universe for something especially if it's a lot bigger than what you've accomplished before the universe is going to challenge you because you can't be wishing for something up here and be down here and every single one of those challenges that are thrown at you makes you reevaluate and grow so you slowly get to this level and then when you receive those wishes that you wanted you are ready because maybe the person you are right now is not ready for those things. Maybe you can't handle things. Maybe you don't have the tools that you need to accomplish those things. But every single challenge, every single roadblock the universe gives you, it's just giving you the tools to be able to handle that once you get there. So for me, I put on my vision board a pretty big goal for my social media channels and I've been facing some roadblocks recently and I just try to think of it every time that I don't feel like it's going well, that I feel like something's in my way, it literally every single time it does not fail to teach me a lesson about something I'm going to need to have thicker skin about, something I'm going to need to adjust, something I'm going to need to improve in order to get to that place. So you can't ask for stuff and expect there not to be hard work and growth that comes with that. The universe is smart. The things you ask for are already yours because you thought of them, but that doesn't mean it's just gonna come out of thin air. It still takes hard work. It takes you growing and having the strength to meet those goals, and we can't just give up when something's in our way. If something's forcing you to change in the moment, as hard as that is, it's gonna better you in the future, I promise you. Again, I'm gonna go back to that quote, diamonds are formed under pressure, but they aren't formed overnight. Take that as you will and apply that to every hardship you have. To back all this up, there's probably someone less qualified than you doing your dream job. There's also someone more qualified than you doing your dream job. So really, that opportunity is here for anybody. At the end of the day, that other person who has your dream job or your dream life, it's their first time here too. They just happen to grow enough to meet those goals and you can too, no matter who you are. So dream big, anything is possible. I truly believe that, but you have to set your mind to it 
and you have to know you're meant for it. I like to say you deserve the best, but in order to get the best, you need to know you deserve it deep down. You have to have this sense of knowing within yourself that you are good enough you are enough to receive those things. So if you don't, I think you need to be on the mission of self-love. You gotta remember sometimes the most magical things happen in the waiting. And the second you give up, you never know if the thing you want is just one door away. Okay, the next thing about your 20s is don't try to escape. If there's a problem, try to sit in it and discover what's wrong. Sometimes a perspective change or an attitude change about a certain situation or a new look at things can really change how you feel about something and the decisions you make in the future. So instead of trying to like drink and do drugs and even escape to new destinations, it's better to just sit with it and actually dissect why you're feeling what you're feeling. So thankfully, BetterHelp is sponsoring our video today. What a better fit. Sometimes all you really need is to talk to someone with an unbiased opinion who can give you a bird's eye view of what you're going through, whether that's career goals, personal things, things you've been dealing with for a very long time. It's great to talk to someone who can see the situation from the outside and give you a new perspective. And talking to a therapist about these things is so underrated and it's something Something everybody needs to do in their 20s. BetterHelp makes starting therapy so much easier and so much less intimidating because you can either have a phone call with your therapist, a video call, you can even use Messenger to chat with them. Whatever is the most comfortable version of therapy for you, you can do that. Finding the right therapist match isn't always the easiest thing to do, but BetterHelp makes it so much easier because if you feel like your therapist isn't the right fit, you can immediately change your therapist with the click of a button. You don't have that awkwardness of, oh, I need to switch my therapist. BetterHelp can match you to over 30 30,000 therapists in their network. Join over 4 million people using BetterHelp to start living a happier and healthier life. Use the link in my description or the one right here. Clicking this link helps support my channel and it gets you 10% off your first month. So start using BetterHelp and hopefully a therapist can help you get through some of the tough times or even the normal times in your life. Back to the video. With the conversation of escapism, social media loves to make you feel like you need to be somewhere else. You need to have different friends. You need to make different amounts of money, live in a different city. And really the truth is you're not going to be happy until you find happiness within yourself and where you are because unfortunately any problem you have is going to follow you to any city you go to. You need to appreciate what you have in your life already before you start trying to go to different places and find new friends and do this and do that. Obviously, every scenario is different and sometimes you do need new friends, like not gonna lie. Sometimes you do need that if you're in a toxic situation, but if you're not and you have good friends or you live in a blessed city already, being somewhere else might not give you that satisfaction and happiness that you're looking for that social media makes you think you need so that's where a gratitude practice would probably be very useful next it's okay to have a flop era you can't appreciate the sunshine if it doesn't rain and a flop era is just your excuse to get to work get thinking and think about how you can improve yourself get out of the flop era it's kind of like an upgrade actually it shouldn't really be called a flop era because every time you get in a flop era you have to improve to get out of it and it's just causing you to grow and then you get an even bigger appreciation for the eras that you're doing good because you're like wait I was flopping before I was down before and now look at me I persevered I made it through and we got past it next you must learn to love yourself because again you have to believe you deserve things you have to believe that you are the most unique person on this planet that there's no one like you because everybody's unique and no one has been raised the same no one has had the exact same environment or the exact same people with the exact same personality even your siblings have different personalities than you there's only one of you every single person has an unfair advantage so say for me my unfair advantage could be that i'm born in canada that is an unfair advantage compared to a lot of other people. Or my unfair advantage could be that my mom owns a Medispa, so I get to make content about Medispa treatments because I have access to that. You have your own unfair advantage, whether it's your humor, whether it's your looks, whether it's your intellect, whether it's where you live, your circumstance. Everybody has an unfair advantage. You just have to use your brain and think about what that is and what makes you different because that is your key to success. You gotta learn what makes you you. And that is gonna be the biggest advantage you have in this life because knowing that your attractiveness is the least interesting thing about you is your biggest superpower. It's about the charisma, it's about the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you hold yourself, the way when you come in the room you know that you're more interesting than your looks perceive you. That's what happens when you see a person walk in and they're just 
their aura is glowing. It's because they are confident in themselves. They have love inside so they can exude love to the outside world too. And honestly, I do think self-affirmations work. It's a great way to build your confidence. And I know this works because when I was younger, maybe I didn't think I was like the most attractive girl or maybe I didn't think I'm the funniest girl or whatever. Even though I knew physically maybe I wasn't there or maybe I wasn't like the cutest girl in school because my mom always told me how beautiful I am and how smart I am and what a good girl I am. She constantly told me that every day and honestly, I was a lot more confident than I should have even been. I'm just saying that the affirmations worked and people would always be like, wow, you're so confident. Like you never care what people think and it's because I was told that every day so I legitimately believed it. Imagine saying that to yourself every day. Eventually, you're gonna believe it and you're gonna grow that self-love within. If you do positive self-affirmations along with the fact of writing down what makes you unique, what makes you you and discovering that, you will be the most confident person in the room and no one will be able to mess with you. Once you have that, you're set because your confidence is so high, no one can break you down. Another thing about your 20s, friendships can change in the least expected ways and that is okay. It's not the end of the world. There doesn't need to be any animosity. People grow apart and I feel like adults or older people at the time had always said this to me. People change, people grow apart, people move in different paths in life and it's okay. It's okay. It's normal. And I feel like no one warns you about this because it happens more often than you think. I think when you know you have to let go of a friend is when you can't be happy for each other anymore. When you have different priorities and values. Those are some things that are very crucial in a friendship. A friendship might not be immediately reciprocal. Like, if they're down, they might not be able to support you at the moment. Or if you're down, you might not be able to give them the support in the moment. But it's about knowing that they'll be there when you're down or when you're up and when they can be. It's knowing that I can maybe not talk to you for two months, and if I'm having a hard time, you will be there to support me, the same way I would drop everything to support you in those times it needs, and I think those are true friendships. A friend is not a friend anymore if you can't share the happy moments with them. You deserve to have people around you that are gonna be happy for you, celebrate with you when you achieve something or when something good happens in your life. If you feel like you're telling your friends something that's good in your life and you're happy about it and they're not feeding that energy back to you, I'm sorry, but probably it's time to let them go. You deserve to feel so good in your friendships. You deserve to feel loved and appreciated and looked at in a positive light. So if you don't feel positivity, it's okay to move on from a friendship and it doesn't need to be a big falling out. Sometimes you just change and sometimes you just move in different directions and we can still have love for people, but also have distance. I'm gonna tell you this right now a friend that can make you laugh is worth a million bucks i feel like we don't laugh enough once we get older i feel like the peter pants laughing moments unfortunately start to go down a bit and a friend that can do that for you a friend that can put a smile on your face make you giggle that shit's worth so much when you get older and i'd say cherish those friendships so much. I think there are so many different types of friendships and we have to realize that not every friend serves the same purpose. You have those ride or die friends that are there for the emotional times, there for the down times and the good times. They're deep friends. They're those people you have deep conversations with. You can talk for hours to you know if you need something, they will be there for you. There's also friends that are super fun and make you laugh and you just have a good time. Like you love going out with them. You love just having those fun moments, doing fun activities with them. Those are a different type of friend and they are needed as well. Just because they're not deep, deep friendships doesn't mean they're not deep in a different way. And some friends are all of those combined. Like there are just different friends for different reasons. There's friends you go to events with. There are work friends. There are friends for specific friend groups, there are friends for fun, there are friends for deep connections, there are friends for many different eras in your life. Another thing I can say about friendships is no one's perfect, including you. So I think everybody has something to work on and if you start nitpicking about all the little things, especially if they're not really deal breakers, especially if it's something you could communicate and fix, you're not gonna have any friends left because literally no one's perfect. And especially at this age, we have so much learning to do. We have so much learning to do for the rest of our lives. Sometimes communication is key and that's all you really need, but don't judge everybody before you judge yourself too a bit you got to be introspective too sometimes you might be the problem and you might not even realize it so give people grace 
but also know when it's time to leave as well. Love and friendships, love and relationships. It's about choosing who you wanna go through those ups with, but also the downs with. Everybody has their differences. It's just how we deal with them and how we communicate them that's important. We're almost at the end here. We've had such a nice chat, but I have a couple more things to add. Gratitude will get you so far in life. If you're asking for everything and not being thankful for one thing, I don't think you're gonna be happy. You are alive. You won the lottery already you're on this earth so appreciate that if nothing else beauty is looking at things with love when you have the lens of love in your eyes anything can be beautiful so look at life like that you can really change your perspective on everything if you change the way you look at things you can see the same thing as someone else and someone can see it as totally negative and you could see the positive in it it's really about how you look at things and really about your perspective so keep that in mind when you're thinking negatively about something there is probably a positive spin on it and my positive spin again is always that the universe will do what's meant for you and maybe i need to learn a lesson from this or maybe this is happening for a reason having a positive outlook and gratitude about life is so important what i like to do sometimes I know I should do this all the time and not only when I'm in a bad place But I typically end up doing this when I'm not feeling too good But what I do to get me out of a funk is the second I wake up. I don't grab my phone I don't look at anything I grab my journal and write five things I'm grateful for. You can start with three if you find that hard But I write five things I'm grateful for and then immediately after Soak in how you feel about those things feel that feeling of gratitude Don't just rush over it really take that feeling in and then right after, you're going to write in the same format five things you're grateful for that haven't happened yet that you want. For example, say, I'm grateful for this home and roof over my head. That is real. That is actually true. And then in the same way, I write, I'm grateful for my 500,000 followers that I love and adore so much and I feel so connected to. Maybe I haven't achieved that yet, but I'm writing it as if I already did. So it's gratitude mixed with manifestation and it works so well. It literally heals your mental while also manifesting what you desire and, and like setting you on the right track for the day. So I find that very useful if you're having troubles with gratitude. And last but not least, release the pressure of your 20s. We put so much pressure on ourselves. It's insane. We have so many unfair expectations of ourselves. Life is beautiful. You have time to do it all. You're not running out of time. We are here for, God willing, 90 years on this planet. Maybe a little less, maybe a little more. You have time. You don't need to buy a house right now. You don't need to be married this second. You don't need to figure out when you're having kids. You have time. You don't need to have your dream career this moment in time exactly. It will come in due time. I promise you, you just need to be worried about enjoying the moments you have while you're young. You are never stuck. There's always a chance for change. It's never too late. Even if you're 40 and you want to change your career, or change your path, you can. If you really want to, you can. Make decisions based on how your ideal life will look like in five years rather than 20 years because in 20 years, you won't even know what you want. Let's just be honest. We change so much just even week to week let alone year to year, you want to think about what you want in 20 years. We don't even know if we're going to be here in 20 years. More realistically, think about what you want in five years and work towards that because at the end of the day, time here is not guaranteed. You change and grow so much as a person. I don't want the same things I wanted last year. Try to narrow your focus down a little bit and I feel like it will help you get less overwhelmed because I feel like a lot of us are thinking about 20 years down the line, 30 years down the line, our families, how we want to provide, all that stuff. That causes too much stress. Think about five years from now. Even if you don't want to do that, think about how you want to live one year from now. And I promise you, it will be so much easier to accomplish. Anyways, this is the first time I'm ever doing content like this or sitting down and speaking about something or giving advice. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys liked it, let me know. Of course, we're going to continue improving because I feel like I was kind of all over the place and blabbering. I'll try to make it a little bit more concise next time. If you have any questions, if you have any advice you need from like your big sister, if you're younger, if you're not in your 20s yet, 
let me know all the questions you have. I'm here to be your big sister. I'm here to be your friend. So whatever questions you have, I love you guys so much. I, honestly, making this video really fed my soul. So I'm so happy I did it. And I'm going to be posting more on YouTube now. And I really like this format for once in a while. I have no idea what I'm doing with my setup. But I just thought I'd just come here and sit down and talk to you guys. So if you enjoyed this, make sure to support me by subscribing, hitting the thumbs up button, and leaving a comment. It really helps the channel and really helps me continue making videos like this. So I love you so, so much. And take care. You got this, babe.